that situation that Yari Namuno Amana Kadumpe, that was President Mahama, who said that there were no dooms or end, there were no pandemic. Ghana, in fact, the world economy was in good shape. We didn't have any war in this country. So journalists, sometimes you should go out there and tell the story as it is. Mahama again in 2020, uh, 2014, appeared that as a president, he was having sleepless night because of almighty do so. He was having sleepless night. And out of frustration, he even told those who says he can't wait to see him out of office. That is Ghanaians who were criticizing him. To be patient since 2016, just around the corner. And I quote him. I'm quoting the former president. For those who disagree with me and are anxious to see my back, don't worry. I, John Dramani Mahama, in 2016. 2016 is not far away. I will leave. And I will urge Ghanaians to be patient because it is in this difficult, it's a difficult job. And at least one expect Ghanaians to be loyal and patient. Ghana for you were all in this country. You were so frustrated that he exhibited his incompetence. That he cannot manage do so. And those people who are attacking him and criticizing him. You should wait. 2016 is just around the corner. And this is the same man turning around, coming to tell Ghanaians that he wants to come back and manage your economy for you. Is it not an absurdity? Is it not an insult to the ordinary Ghanaian people? And sometimes, journalists, you should go back. So I continue. As a matter of fact... The emphatic nature of the defeat in 2016 was so erroneous that a change was there that Ghanaians voted massively for Nana Adudan Kwekufuadu to steer the affairs of this country. And the larger population accepted the style of governance. As a matter of fact, the extraordinary spending and physical expansion that has accompanied the pandemic has been phenomenal in this government under Kufuadu. The reality is that we have been going through a big change for the past five years after taking over from the incompetence of the NDC government in managing the Ghanaian economy. Ghana has been going through massive change. And with each year, it only seems to grow exponentially. Denial of this does not negate that it has not been occurring and will not continue to occur. It's a fact. Indeed, these are the facts. In 2021, Ghana came as second in attracting foreign direct investment in Africa. The second. As a nation, we bang in 2.7 billion worth of investment out of which $2.6 billion was from foreign direct investment. One would have asked, why was it that when the incompetent one was taking over the leadership of this country, there were no such inflow of foreign direct investment into this country to the extent that the country was able to uh, 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 benefit $2.6 billion uh, from this foreign direct investment. We realized from 271 registered projects in Ghana, and it's envisaged that 27,000 direct jobs were created according to the statistics from Ghana Investment Promotion Center. Aku Fuado's administration is supporting Ghanaian workers by throwing a lifeline to them. There have been massive recruitment, you know, as a result of the IMS policy credibility by the incompetent one, the NDC. They freeze the Ghanaian employment in the public sector. And when we're able to bring back the economy from the IMF, we were able to recruit nurses, doctors and healthcare workers, teachers, police officers, and many others in the public sector after many years of freeze. And I repeat, after many years of freeze of employment in the public sector, the country wage bill has more than doubled under the Kufuadu regime for the last five years. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kufuadu administration has enrolled almost 15.5 million people on the biometric national ID. And I repeat, 
This is fact. Scheme, the national ID with the NDC came under Mills and Mahama and gave us small papers that this is your national ID. Go and register. We didn't, it didn't even materialize. And they spend the taxpayers' money on this particular thing. And journalists, sometimes you need to go deeper. A Kufuadu administration came. We have created jobs as a result of this and giving an identity to the ordinary Ghanaian. We are trying to digitalize the whole nation using the national ID. And it has created a lot of employment. Again, we have implemented the groundbreaking mobile interoperability project. Ghana is the only country in the world that has thus far implemented currently the fastest growing mobile market in Africa and has 36.9 million registered mobile accounts in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, this significant expansion of infrastructure required capital investment and that is where government revenue drives through tax policies come at play. And we have to also understand that if you live in a country whereby taxation is, doesn't play a role in the, in the country's development, you have nowhere to go. Especially during this global crisis of pandemic and war, we need to come back home as a country and do policies that can generate funds for development. And in fact, it is very important. As going on, we will make critical analysis of these issues. Indeed, the tax economy actually has a biblical injunction. Those of you who are Christians. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 21, when the Pharisees set a trap for Jesus with a query about paying taxes to Caesar, one of them showed him a, a Roman coin and asked them to who heads or inscription were on the coin. And they answered, it's Caesar's. And Jesus responded, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God things that are God. By the biblical injunction, we refuse to let the NDC stand in our way of economic recovery to bring Ghana back on track after the pandemic and the war. President Akufuado is focused on keeping our economy strong Durable, notwithstanding the NDC obstructionism. They are obstructionist people who are nation wreckers and they will always say anything negative. Meanwhile, when they were in leadership or in the help of affairs, they couldn't handle the economy. The NDC elements like Felix Ofosukwachi, Sami Jenfi, Isaac Adongo, who are supposedly their economic gurus. Who are fraudulently hoodwinking the gullible and the degrading political discourse are just acting opposing like arsonists who are posing as firefighters. And they are obviously expecting to take credit for having extinguished the fire that they set for themselves. Let me end here, ladies and gentlemen, with this admonition to the NDC. We are sending a message to the NDC. A tale was told of an emperor who wore no clothes. Only the innocent knew he was naked. If the vociferous NDC element dropped their sanctimonious and all-knowing but know nothing, all-knowing but know nothing attitude and pay attention to the basic details of the MPP, Vice President Baumia's economic policy, they will certainly see the truth that the reality is dawning on this world. The reality is that there is a global recession. There is a pandemic that is hitting the bigger economies across the world. There is a problem. There is a war going on that has economic repercussions in this country. And nobody should just use that as a political advantage to score just political points to suit their own political whims and caprices. But we need to look at the crystal ball and say that despite the shocks, despite the problems that we are going through, Ghana is working under Kufuado. Ghana is working. 
go across the globe in America and in Europe. You cannot afford even a cooking oil from a supermarket. Just a common grocery. You cannot get it. Fuel prices are escalating at a level that it has not never happened in the history of the world for over 30 years. People are queuing for fuel in almighty Britain. People are queuing for groceries. And we sit in this country and we have an opposition leader who was so incompetent during the time that he led this country when there was no global recession, no global crisis, there were no war going on, and he was able to push the country economy in the hands of the IMF to detect our economy for us. And these are the people who has the shenanigans to come and tell Ghanaians that they have the magic wand to handle the Ghanaian economy. It's an insult to the integrity of the Ghanaian voter. It's an insult to the minds of the ordinary Ghanaian people. Yes, we are not saying the MPP government is a saint when it comes to managing the economy. But let's look at those alternatives who are making noise, cacophony of noises all over the places and telling us that they are the alternatives when they were given the mantle of leadership to handle the Ghanaian economy. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I just said enough. And I will end, I will end my statement here by um, saying that Ghana will work again and Ghana will continue to work under His Excellency Nana Adodanko Kufuado and the MPP leadership. Long live Ghana, long live the NPP, long live the Kufuado administration, and long live Ghana. May God bless us all. Thank you very much.